Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a, well, honestly, it's been a couple months since I've put anything up, and I, I do apologize for that, but uh, I, there has been good reason for it. Um, we've had a lot of family things happen over the last couple months. Uh, people coming and going, and uh, we've also been on a couple trips over the last couple months, and I've had a job change. Uh, <laughs> the last week, I've my, well, my wife and my son and I have been fighting a bug, so I've actually been sick for a bit and finally starting to feel a little more human. And uh, so, yeah, uh, again, thanks for everybody who's been sticking around, everybody who uh, has supported me by just, you know, staying subscribed and the little like button uh, pushes and such. I, I appreciate every bit of that. It's, yeah, <laughs> honestly, I get, a, I get a real kick out of when I see, bing, oh, hey, new subscriber. It's a lot of fun, honestly. Um, this week, uh, just to get back into things, um, I figured I'd get, let everybody know what's happening. As I say, just it's been a little busy. Now I can finally have a chance to get a bit more uh, back into a groove of things and start making things again. I have a list of buddy do projects or just basically things that people have asked me to make for them uh, that I need to get caught up on. Uh, I've got a couple pieces of tooling I want to make for myself uh, that are, it's going to take a bit of work and time. I have the materials, I have the plans, I just need the time. And as for today, uh, well, <laughs> I had a pr uh, small task on my to-do list that kind of moved over to the honeydew list. Uh, I don't know, for, well, for those of you who are single fellas or for those of you who uh, aren't re don't really use that sort of term where you're from, even if you, English is your primary language, the Honey-do list is the list of things that your wife asks or tells or voluntolds you to do. And so, well, when the heater fan uh, went out on the pickup when she was driving with my son the other day in 30 degree centigrade weather in a black truck, yeah, she, it, yeah, let's just say that the uh, heater fan repair moved from the to-do list to the honey-do list. So. It's uh, nothing huge, just I figured uh, for those of you who've never had to replace a connector before on, a, uh, on an electrical connector on a, on a vehicle, um, the, I just showed a couple little tricks as far as using the splice clips, uh, especially for larger gauge wire. Um, yeah, it's, anyway, I do automotive work as well as machining and such, so uh, hopefully this is of use to somebody. And uh, yeah, um, I'm back in the game. I'll be uh, back out in the shop more often now, and you'll be hearing from me more often. So, again, thanks everybody for your support. One of the things that's been on the uh, <laughs> to-do list for quite a while now, and it seems like the to-do list never really gets shorter, uh, new things get added to it as uh, things get taken off of it. And some of them are actually part of the honey-do list, which, well, let's just say they take priority over certain other things. Uh, at least because I want to enjoy domestic happiness and I don't want to mess that up. But as far as uh, one of the things that uh, was on the regular list but now suddenly wound up on the honeydew list because of the especially hot weather we've been having in Alberta lately is the um, <laughs> heater fan in the pickup. We have a 2003 Dodge uh, three-quarter ton and lately, and it's been getting worse, but what happens is right now, as you can see, we have no uh, no heater fan, which doesn't matter so much when you can roll the windows down, but when the outside air temperature is still warm anyway, it doesn't help a whole lot. And especially now that we have little munchkin, uh, yeah, we need to make sure we have at least reasonably cool air in this thing. Um, what I've done is I've traced it down to the uh, connector that goes onto the blower motor. Uh, the blower motor itself is okay. I'm just gonna uh, pause here and I'll bring you down to the, uh, to the blower motor itself. You know, one of, sometimes one of the trickiest things with trying to make videos for YouTube and the stuff like this is trying to get the lighting right. Um, hopefully this isn't too much of a glare for everybody, but uh, so yeah, what happened was I found out after fiddling with it a bit and getting in here, I don't know if you can see in the end of that connector there and how black it is and how crispy and you can even see a little bit of the, little bit of the green death at the back of this connector. Uh, you can buy these connectors separately, I have one, and that's what we're going to do today is we're actually going to replace this connector and then we'll clean up the terminals up inside that uh, blower motor itself. And uh, the way I found this was when it was uh, working and then I'd hit a bump and it would quit working, hit another bump and it would work again. Because 
what would happen is the connector would jiggle inside its socket there on the motor. Um, the motor itself is okay. Uh, I know sometimes you can have uh, motors that have uh, bad brushes and stuff like that in them. Um, this one here I think was just a bad connection from a little bit of corrosion. So we're going to replace this and we hang on to this motor for now. Um, who knows, maybe down the road it'll fail, but again this truck's got 270,000 K on it so I wouldn't be surprised but uh, I'm not going to replace it just on spec. So what I'm going to do here is replace it with this. This is the uh, replacement kit, uh, 6804-0446-AA. Um, I'm going to try to do this as best I can within the field of view. Uh, the, the viewfinder itself on the camera is actually facing slightly away from me and it's just a bit of an awkward angle of getting here to see, but I'll, I'll do my best. So we'll open this guy up. Uh, one thing that these kits come with is some shrink tube to put over the lines, but as well it comes with these these things, these splice clips, and I'll show you how to I'll show you how those go in place. Um, when you're especially I'm finding this with uh, crimping or well soldering larger larger gauge wires, uh, it'll be better off to you're better off to use the clip and then make sure that you have a good connection that way. I know a lot of guys don't use them and they seem to be seem to have um, you know, reasonably reasonable luck and whatever with that. Uh, I'm just trying to be careful with this one, and I may as well show you the proper Mopar approved way. One thing I'm going to do here is I just cut the connector off there, and I'm going to leave this. Well, for one thing, I can't take it apart, but uh, we're going to keep this aside for a bit of a reference because we need to make sure we get the correct wire in the correct cavity, the correct terminal. Otherwise, my blower motor is going to spin backwards. It's not going to help us a whole heck of a lot. Being a squirrel cage type fan, it probably would still blow a bit, but it's certainly not going to be efficient. So, take and we're going to strip a little bit of wiring. Now, one thing, <laughs> one thing that you run the risk of when you do anything on YouTube is having. And I mean, I fully expect this because this is part of the game. You wind up with a number of people who may do things slightly differently and, you know, certainly, hey, I, I will be honest in that I don't know everything. Sometimes guys have really good ideas that I've never thought of. And so I'm more than happy to be corrected if I'm totally, if I'm definitely doing something wrong. But uh, again, you, you solder wires, I mean, they're... I remember uh, a technical service bulletin came about a while back. It had to do with the uh, exhaust systems on the Cummins pickups and some of the sensors. And Well, guys were replacing the sensors but not using the splice clips and then they were having comebacks. And that's when engineering got in everybody's case saying you got to use the splice clips because apparently if you don't use a splice clip you can actually inc increase the resistance of your circuit by a few, uh, few milliohms which messes up by a few milli uh, volts on the signal and could be you know damaging to the signal on a s sensitive system. I realize this isn't a sensitive system but we've also got a fair amount of current flowing through this. So now before I do anything shrink tube onto the line or the new piece. Um, I would normally in, in some situations I would try sliding it over but it, this one here won't fit so we have to put it on first. That has caught me so many times that I have to cut it apart and retry. Now, these splice clips, what I like to do is I like to take my pliers and just start the crimping slightly. Start the crimping slightly before I do anything. Because that way, before I'm in the awkward position like sometimes you are when, well, there's another recall out for the pickups. It's a few years old now, but it was for the heater or uh, fuel heater connectors on the 6-7 Cummins up underneath the hood. And where you had to do it, I could weasel in there with my skinny little arms and get it done, but it was a lot easier to do if I partially squished the terminal to begin with. There we go. 
Now I wound up having to use both hands because I happen to like the tendons in my wrist and I don't want carpal tunnel. So there we go. There. That clip's in place. Yeah, hopefully you can see that there. I'll do that to both. I have the ignition off and the uh, heater fan control off right now, by the way. Otherwise, uh, considering the size of the wire or cables and lines coming to this thing, it could be a bit of an interesting light show if it uh, was actually energized. These pliers were a few bucks, definitely, but they have jaws that are specially shaped to form little rolling crimps in the ends or in the sides of the crimp connectors. Oops. And I realize this isn't really earth shattering and I mean a number of you folks probably have already done stuff like this before but for anybody who hasn't if it saves a few saves somebody a few bucks then that's really all I'm looking for. Other people have shared with me it's just want to sh share along. And crimp, crimp, and crimp. Okay, now this is one spot where I'm sure that somebody's going to troll me. So be it. Now the trick is trying not to light the truck on fire. Because for cables and wires this size, I don't really like using soldering iron because the soldering iron just doesn't really throw enough heat and yes I know it's gonna melt the insulation a little bit that's what the heat shrink is for I like to go till yeah there we go we have solder coming through there we go That's now filled with solder. Let me do the other one. As I say, you can troll me if you like and criticize me. That's I accept that. Here we are. We have solder all the way through. Next step, slide the heat shrink into place. And yes, it does damage the wiring insulation a little bit right next to where you're soldering, but that's all getting covered over with heat shrink anyway. And yes, I'm using a torch on the heat shrink. I'm just going quickly to apply a little bit of controlled heat. There we go. So next step is we take our new shell of the connector. That's the side we have to push the terminals in. Looking at our connector, uh, the right hand side, it may look black there, but that's just because it got overheated. The right hand side is actually the green, and the left hand side facing the back, I've been burned by that before, facing the back, uh, is the black. So, left hand side being the black one. There we go. We've only got one other side that we can install. There we are. Now, in the kit, there's no terminal position assurance clip in the kit. And the one is not coming out of the old one. In, in, in one piece, let's just put it that way. So, that will have to do. 
Now, I'm going to take and let's give it a quick rub. Clean up the terminals. I can see them from here, which is totally cool. Sorry, you can't see them from where you're sitting, but again, it's just to clean them up a little bit. There are actually kits you can get for, uh, for um, tools from the tool trucks for that just that purpose. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Tuck that up there. Out of the way. There we are. Now, let's see what we have. Oh, there we are. Yeah, three quarter speed, half speed, quarter speed off. There's quarter speed, I can hear it running. There we go. Again, it's probably not really rocket science to uh, a lot of you folks who are sort of tinkers and um, guys who like to fiddle with things and fix things anyway. Um, I figured I'd just give you an, uh, a shot of the way that, uh, well, the way that we were kind of instructed at, uh, when I was working for a Chrysler dealer, uh, how to actually use the splice clips and solder using the splice clips. So anyway, another one of the, uh, well, like I say, this is on the to-do list, but then it wound up on the honeydew list because things were a little warm and the better half didn't want to be that warm. So, anyway, thanks for uh, watching. Hopefully it helped. And I'll see you guys next time. So, yeah, uh, again, that wasn't really a... Uh, I know it's not a huge repair, um, but for somebody who's never had to replace a connector before or know what to look for, um, or if your heater fan's cutting in and out and you want to check a couple things before you spend 150 bucks an hour at a shop yeah just go wiggle a couple wires especially down near the blower motor and the blower motor resistor and see what you get um, I think that kit cost me 30 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that so hopefully it's of use to somebody uh, thanks for everybody who's subscribed and hit the like button and all the you know support I've gotten and the positive comments and um, thank you for all your support I really do appreciate it it's uh, the YouTube uh, hobby community really is a fun place. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. I'll see you next time.